Wednesday in the month of July. Hallelujah. And also we are wrapping up this teaching on deep intimacy with God. Today we shall be seeing part 6 of it. Deep intimacy with God, part 6. 1 Kings 17.1 1 Kings 17.1 And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Deep intimacy with God, part six. Prophet Elijah was a prophet who had intimacy with God. His intimacy with God was so deep. He always stood before God in the place of intimacy. That was why in 1 Kings 17, 1, he said unto Ahab, he said, as the Lord God liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain, according to my word. Invariably, before the God I stand in the place of deep intimacy, there shall be no dew nor rain. He was always standing in the place of deep intimacy with God. And God honored him. God honors the people that know how to maintain deep intimacy with him. If you want to enjoy God's honor, maintain intimacy. If you want to enjoy heaven's honor, maintain deep intimacy with God. Today we are going to use the life of Elijah as a case study. What happens to the people of deep intimacy with God? What happens to the people that know how to maintain deep intimacy with God? Number one, people who maintain deep intimacy with God are people who have hate for sin. Anybody that maintains intimacy with God has a natural phobia for sin. In 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 30 to 34, we saw how Israel backslided. Ahab got married to Jezebel, the daughter of Ejbal. They misled Israel into the worship of Baal. They had prophets of Baal. And Elijah developed phobia for it. He developed hate for the sin they were committing. And he came out and said, Before God whom I stand, by the virtue of what you've done, there shall be no rain on you. According to the words of my mouth. You can't, you can't maintain intimacy, intimacy with God and enjoy sin and live in sin. The people that maintain deep intimacy with God have, have hatred for sin. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You can't carry God and love sin. You can't, you can't be in God's presence and be living as a sinner. Number two, what happens to the people of deep intimacy with God? The people that know how to maintain intimacy with God, what happened to them? Number two, people who maintain deep intimacy with God are fearless before life threatening challenges. Anywhere you see people of intimacy with God, they are people who are fearless before life threatening challenges. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 17 to 18, we saw Elijah telling Ahab, when they met, Ahab said, you are the one that troubled Israel. 
You are the troubler of Israel. Elijah responded to him. He replied him. He said, it is you and your father's house that troubled Israel. He was fearless. His utterances would have cost his life. But yet, because of the virtue of intimacy, he developed fearlessness. If you want to be fearless, maintain intimacy with God. If you want to be fearless, maintain intimacy with God. Look at Peter, who denied Jesus, who was chicken hearted. Look at the apostles, who were running away when Jesus was arrested. When the Holy Ghost came in the upper room where they gathered in the place of intimacy, when the Holy Ghost came, they became bold, they became fearless. They became fearless. They could look at the, the, the Roman army, Roman soldiers, and tell them that is it good to obey you or to obey God? Intimacy is the cure for fear. Number three, what happens to the people who maintain deep intimacy with God? Number three, people who maintain deep intimacy with God do make bold declarations. The people that maintain deep intimacy with God are the people of bold declarations. First Kings 17 1. There shall be no dew nor rain these years, but according to the words of my mouth. According to the words of my mouth means according to the declarations of my mouth, there shall be no rain, there shall be no dew. God is looking for men in the secret place who he will empower with boldness for declarations. They say the people that stand before God, kneel before God, can stand before any challenge, any opposition, any man, any woman. We must give ourselves to God not only this month let us make it a habit to maintain intimacy with God in Luke 21 15 he said for I will give you a mouth and a tongue which all your adversaries will not be able to resist nor gain say you'll be bold the righteous is as bold as a lion Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 where the word of a king is there is power are you ready for bold declarations? God is looking for people that will challenge the people in governance who are not doing well. God is looking for men and women that will come out and make declarations so that you will honor it. Say, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall establish it. Are you ready for bold declarations? You will be empowered for it in the place of intimacy. Number 14 that happened to the people who maintain deep intimacy with God is that people who maintain deep intimacy with God know his capacity. The people who are always before God in the place of intimacy know the capacity of God. When you spend time with God, you become like him. And when you become like him, you know his capacity. You know what he can do and what he cannot do. Are you understanding me? That was why he made that declaration. He knew that God has the capacity not to make rain to fall. And he also knew that God had the capacity to make rain to fall. That was why in James chapter 5 verse 17 to 18, the Bible says Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. He was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly that there should be no rain. And there was no rain. And he prayed again and the heaven gave the rain. He knew the capacity of God. He knew what God could do. He knew that God could bring rain and God can seize rain. 
Do you know that God can do wonders? In Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? There is nothing that God cannot do for you. The problem is not with God. The problem is with you. You don't know his capacity. You don't know his capacity. God is not a man. Stop looking at God as a man. God is not a mortal man. God is God. If you know the capacity of God, you will not be afraid. In Luke 1 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. That was the response of the angel to Mary. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. In Genesis 18 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? That was the response of the angel to Sarah, who was laughing in unbelief. Is anything too hard for the Lord to do? And in Mark 9 26, Jesus says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. I came to tell somebody tonight that God is the God of possibilities. That thing that looks seemingly impossible is possible with God. Am I talking to somebody here? I pray for you before the end of this month. Receive God's visit. There is nothing that God cannot do. That was why in Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 11, he brought, Jer he brought Ezekiel to the value, value of dry bones. The Bible said the bones were very dry. The bones were very dry and scattered in a valley. And he brought Ezekiel to teach him that he is a God of possibilities. He said, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest. He said, prophesy. I came to tell you that that thing that looks impossible is possible with God. Am I talking to somebody? God is looking for men that know his capacity. Do you believe that God can do it? Do you believe that God can change your story? Do you believe that God can change your situations? Do you believe that God can make you that looks like a non-entity non to become a some entity? Do you believe that God has a capacity to make it to be a solution to this generation? There is nothing that God cannot do. I prophesy to you. This year, you will see the capacity of God. If I'm talking to you, let your amen be the loudest. Amen. I said this year, you shall see the capacity of God. Hallelujah. There is nothing that is too difficult for God to do. Are you with me, church? There is nothing that is too difficult for your God to do. Number five, thing that happened to the people who maintain deep intimacy with God is that the people who maintain deep intimacy with God do enjoy His supplies. The people who maintain deep intimacy with God do enjoy his supplies. You can't be in lack. You can't maintain intimacy with God and be in lack. It is not possible. It is not possible. It is not possible. In 1 Kings 17, verse 2 to 6, 1 Kings 17, 2 to 6, after the declarations that there will be no rain nor dew, in the space of three years and six months, the Bible said Elijah went to Brookcherit. God instructed him to go to Brookcherit. He went there. There was water for him there. It was it was a supernatural supply. The Bible said in that very place, the raven was bringing bread and meat for him. It's like bringing bread and suya for him, morning and evening. The city was ravaged with famine because there was no rain. And a man of intimacy was enjoying divine supplies. That shall be your portion. I said, that shall be your portion. I said, that shall be your portion. In the morning, he will eat bread and suya. In the evening, he will eat bread and suya. Others were starving. He was eating by the virtue of supernatural supplies. 
in verse 8 to, uh, to 24 1st Kings 17 8 to 24 the Bible said that the brook dried there was no water there and God sent him to a widow in Zareph he said I have commanded the widow there to sustain thee but when I read that place I discovered that reverse was the case how do I mean when he met the widow the widow said she was gathering two sticks to prepare the last meal so that she and her son will eat and die but through connectivity with prophetic grace the man of God said bring it let me eat as the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth the bread will not finish and the oil will not finish and the Bible said that the bread and the oil didn't finish till rain came that was that was a supply that came from heaven he enjoyed it you will enjoy it also in first kings 19 verse 5 to 8 first kings 19 5 to 8 when he was running away from jezebel the bible said he sat under a juniper tree because he was weary he was discouraged he sat under a juniper tree as he sat there in that exhaustion, the Bible says he saw an angel of God who brought bread, cake, baked from heaven, and water to him. He said, eat. Wake up and eat. He arose, ate the bread, uh, the cake, and drank water. It could be a ragolis water. It could be an ever wine. It came directly from above. He slept again. The Bible said the angel came again the second time and ask him to arise and eat because the journey was too far for him he arose ate and went with the in the strength of that food into the wilderness supernatural supply is possible at the place of intimacy are you understand what i'm saying he said i will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory by christ jesus in Job 22, 24 to 25, we saw it last Sunday. He said, he will give you plenty of silver. You will lay up gold as dust. And he will give you plenty of silver. You can't be a man of intimacy and suffer poverty. You can't be a person of intimacy and not be supplied for. I prophesy supernatural supplies to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy supernatural supplies to you in the name of Jesus before the end of this year, receive it in abundance in the name of Jesus. Peter sat with the master in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. He sat with Jesus, listening to Jesus. He gave Jesus his boat, sat with Jesus, listening to Jesus. It was a moment of intimacy with Jesus, a moment of intimacy with the world. Immediately after that, his failure story changed to a success story. He failed all through the night. When he went fishing, he caught nothing. But by the virtue of intimacy with Jesus, by the virtue of intimacy with the world, by the time Jesus was through, Jesus told him to launch into the deep for a catch. From nowhere, there was a supernatural supply. That shall be your portion these remaining days in this month. In the precious name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, I shall enjoy his supplies. Say, in the name of Jesus, I shall enjoy his abundant supplies. Number 16 that happened to the people who maintain deep intimacy with God is that people who maintain deep intimacy with God don't doubt his abilities. The people who maintain deep intimacy with God don't doubt the abilities of God. They, never, they don't doubt him. In 1 Kings 17, 1, Prophet Elijah never doubted God's ability. He never doubted the abilities of God to stop rain. He never doubted the abilities of God to send down rain. Are you understand what I'm saying? Child of God, don't doubt God's abilities. He is God, he is not a man. He is God, he is not a man. No matter how long that miracle had stayed, no matter how long you've waited for that miracles, don't doubt the abilities of God. 
Abraham waited for the covenant son that was promised by God. God told him that Sarah will conceive and bring forth a son. It shall be a covenant son. He waited and waited and waited and waited until his body died. He couldn't function as a man. Sarah entered into monopause. So the chances of conception was gone. But in Romans chapter 4 verse 18 the Bible says who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be. He never doubted the abilities of God. His hope was gone but he believed in hope. His hope was truncated by the virtue of delay but yet he strengthened his hope. He kept his hope alive. He believed in hope. That since God has spoken, God will bring it to pass. Verse 19. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness you must believe God's abilities you must not doubt his abilities you must not doubt it he can give you children at any time he can give you husband at any time he can give you a wife at any time. He can give you breakthrough at any time. Abraham left his father's house at the age of 75. Entered into the covenant of wealth. Became wealthy. He started having children after that. Did his faith work? Yes. Sarah conceived. His body rejuvenated. Pounds back to life. And Sarah conceived. He didn't end there. When Sarah died, he married Keturah and had six sons with Keturah. So in his lifetime, he had eight children. One from Haggai, six from Keturah, and one who was a covenant son from Sarah. We must not doubt the abilities of God. In Psalm 78, verse 19, the children of Israel doubted God. They sinned against God. They provoked God by the virtue of their doubt. And they tempted him. The Bible said they tempted him by asking, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? That was what they asked God. Can he furnish a table in the wilderness? The Bible said they ate manna. The food of angels were given to them. They ate it. Yet they doubted God. The rock poured him, poured them water to drink. Yet they doubted God's ability. Anytime you begin to doubt the abilities of God, you are tempting God. You are tempting God. Never forget that God can do all things. Are you understanding what I'm saying? How can, how, can, how can they ask God that kind of a question? Whether he can furnish a table before them in the wilderness. They forgot that in Psalms 23 verse 5, God was speaking. He said, thou preparest, David was speaking prophetically. He said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So if God could prepare a table in the presence of your enemies, God can also prepare a table for you even in your wilderness experiences. Am I talking to somebody here? Never doubt his abilities. Believe him. Have faith in God. Romans 11.1 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The Bible says, By it the elders obtain a very good report. They, they obtain a good report by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. 
For they that come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you believe God's abilities, God will surprise you. God will shock you. And you will be a surprise to your generation. This is a prophecy for somebody. Never doubt the abilities of God. Never. Listen, men may write you off. Men may look down on you. Challenges may stagnate you. But child of God, in the midst of those situations, never doubt his abilities. Never doubt his abilities. It doesn't matter when. Keep believing God. The Bible says some of the people in Hebrews 11, some of them died while believing. Are you understanding me? Keep believing God. Never doubt his abilities. Let your faith come alive. Habakkuk 2.4 Romans 1.17 Galatians 3.11 Hebrews 10.38 I take them again. Habakkuk 2.4 Romans 1.17 Galatians 3.4 Hebrews 10.38 The just shall live by faith. Now look at Habakkuk 2.4 says The just shall live by faith. His faith. Not your pastor's faith. Not your brother's faith. Not your sister's faith. The just shall live by his faith. Believe God. It is possible for you to be a multi-billionaire. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you are hearing me say I hear. It is possible for you to own businesses. It is possible for you to carry the mantle of your family, to carry the mantle of your community, to carry the mantle of this, this very state, the mantle of wealth, the mantle of success, the mantle of prosperity. It is possible. Never doubt God's abilities. Mashanda Bayanda. Lift up your right hand and say, Oh God, increase my faith. The disciples prayed it one day. They said, Jesus, increase our faith. Never doubt his abilities. Listen, I was telling my wife, I said, After this government will go, God will raise us a man that will fix this country. Watch it. Watch it. A Messiah is coming. And he's coming from God as an answer to the prayer of the saints. Do you understand what I'm saying? Number seven thing that will happen to the people who maintain deep intimacy with God is that people of deep intimacy with God do have access into his secrets. The people that maintain deep intimacy with God have access into his secrets. In 1 Kings 18 verse 1 to 2 It was only Elijah That knew that God was about to send rain He said go Go and look for Ahab Tell them that rain is coming Elijah gained access Into God's secrets As to when He will send rain He was a man of intimacy Listen People that maintain intimacy with God enjoy secrets. God reveals secrets to them. At times if I pray for, pray for long, God will be opening my eyes and be showing me things in the church, outside the church, in the lives of people, pastors in the city, people in the city, people outside the city. And I will give them call, tell them, look at what I saw. At times, even what the devil is planning, what the devil planned against me was revealed at a place of intimacy three times. 19, 19, 2018. He said, Go! I am about to send out rain. The place of intimacy is the access to the secrets of God. In Psalms 24, verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. And he will show them his covenant. God will show them his covenant. May God show you hidden secrets. If you want to shout amen, shout a better amen. amen. May God show you hidden secrets. Listen. God could open your eyes into secrets of businesses. Secrets of wealth. 
is there in Isaiah 45 verse 3 I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches that are hidden in secret places I will give them to you God will open your eyes say oh Lord open my eyes say oh Lord open my eyes he is the revealer of secrets in Deuteronomy 29 29 Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto God. But the ones that are revealed are revealed unto us and to our children. God is the custodian of secrets. He unveiled them to the people of intimacy. He reveals hidden secrets of divine direction, of businesses, of the plans of the devil. He reveals them. He's the revealer of secrets. Amos 3.7 The Lord will not do anything unless he reveals them to his prophets, his servants. The Lord does nothing until he reveals them to his prophets, his servants. How many of God's servants do we have here this evening? I pray for you. May God open your eyes into hidden secrets. Anything that is blocking your eyes, that is blinding you not to see, may they be removed in the name of Jesus. Listen, if your eyes can see, you won't die anyhow. If your eyes can see, you will not be two by four one niners. Are you understand what I'm saying? You need to see. You will see something. I said, may God open your eyes to see. The secret of the wealth of the wealth transfer of Laban to Jacob was revealed in the place of secrets. In the, in the secret place. Am I talking to somebody tonight? May God open your eyes. In Daniel chapter 2, we saw how King Nebuchadnezzar had a vision. He had a dream. And nobody could interpret it. The wizards, the sorcerers, the magicians, the, the stargazers, the astrologers, none of them could give interpretation to his dreams. And the king wanted to kill all of them. Because they couldn't give interpretation to his dreams. And when Daniel heard about it, he said, let the king give us time. Let him give us time. What he needs is not with man. It's with the revealer of secrets. And Daniel called on his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they went into the place of prayers, into the place of intimacy, and began to kabash, and began to pray. And the Bible says in verse 19 of Daniel 2, that the secret was revealed unto Daniel in the visions of the night. The secret was revealed unto Daniel in the visions of the night. Today, God will show you something. Before the end of this month, may God show you something in the precious name of Jesus. Say, oh God, open my eyes to hidden secrets. Say, oh God, Open my eyes to hidden secrets. Listen, the problem is not with God. The problem is with you. You are too far from God. You are too far. Listen, the more you come close to God, the more you hear what heaven is saying. Psalms 19, day unto day, utter speech. The heavens declare your, good, your goodness. The firmament declare your goodness. He said there is no place where the voice and the speech is not heard. God speaks 247. The only people that could that will be able to catch the signals are people that are close to God in the place of intimacy. May God usher you there in the precious name of Jesus. Number eight thing that happened to the people of deep intimacy is that people of deep intimacy do have access to the keys of heaven. The people who maintain deep intimacy with God do have access to the keys of heaven. Hmm. First Kings 17, 1 Kings 17.1 and James chapter 5 verse 17 to 18. The Bible said, when Elijah made that declaration, God honored it. Now listen, a man of God said, he said, the declaration of Elijah was as if he locked the heavens and put the key in his pocket and walked away. There shall be no rain nor dew by the space of three years and six months. 
It was as if he locked the heavens and put the key in his pocket. What do we mean? The men of intimacy are key carriers. They carry keys to many doors. Are you understand what I'm saying? In Matthew 16, 19, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. I will give unto you the keys to doors. Step forth your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I receive keys to open my heavens. I receive keys to doors of nations. I receive key of divine favor. I receive key of opportunity. I receive key of greatness. I receive key of prosperity. He said, I will give unto you the keys. He didn't say key. He said keys. The key of your car is there. The key of your companies are there. The key of nations are there. The key of opportunities are there. Any key you want is among those keys that he promised to give to you. Are you ready to collect those keys? Come into the place of intimacy. Come to the place of, we, are, we are sleeping too much. This, this generation, this Lodatian church sleeps a lot. It's high time we began to go to the place of intimacy with God. Keys are waiting for you there. I pray for you. Receive them in the name of Jesus. Receive them in the name of Jesus. Listen. Listen. When God gives you that key, it doesn't matter the contending forces. When God gives you that key, it doesn't matter the contending forces. Are there contending forces? Yes. There are contending forces that will not want your doors to open. There are contending forces that are resisting you. They are aware that if your doors are open, you will begin to accelerate in life. So they fight your open doors. They fight your greatness. They fight your opportunities. They fight your successes. They fight everything you do. In 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, a great door, an effectual, is open before me. But there are many adversaries. Many door closers. Tonight I came to handle those, those, those door closers. Any devil that is closing your door, I command them to die by fire. Any witch, any wizard that is closing your door, I command them to die by fire. You are coming with key. You are coming with key from God tonight. I mean, are you understand what I'm saying? God is giving you key. No witch can stop you. No native doctor can stop you. No devil can stop you. No occultic man can stop you. No altar. No voice from altars can stop you. The key is coming from above. Listen. When God gives keys, no man can stop you. Revelation 3, verse 7 to 8. He said, I have placed an open door before you. He said, no man can shut it. He has placed an open door. The door is perpetually open. No man can close it. And it is repeated in Isaiah 22, 22. Actually, Isaiah 22, 22 was a prophecy of Revelation 3, 7 to 8. He has given you the key of David. Do you have that key in your hands? Do you have that key? That key is the key of possibilities. That key is the key of possibilities. I pray for you. As you live here today, doors are opening for you. I said doors are opening for you. I said doors are opening for you. In the precious name of Jesus. Any power that will resist you dies tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Before the end of this year, enjoy open doors. Before the end of this year, enjoy open doors. Number nine, thing that happened to the people that maintain deep intimacy with God is that people who maintain deep intimacy with God have the capacity to call down the judgment and the mercy of God. People who maintain deep intimacy with God have the capacity to call down the judgment and the mercy of God. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21 to 39, the Bible says that when Elijah met Ahab, in verse 7 and 8, he said, go gather all the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, gather them. 
We had prophets of Groove and prophets of Baal. All of them were 850. He said, let us meet, let us meet at, the, at Mount Camel. He told all the prophets of Baal, 400 of them. He said, you people are many. Call on your God. You people are many. Call on your God. And I will call on my God. He said, the God that will answer by fire, let him be God. And the, the prophets of Baal began to call on Baal. Baal means the God of fire. Baal is the God of fire. So, they were calling on the God of fire. The Bible said they began to shout, Baal, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, Baal, hear us. The Bible said there was no response. There was no response. The Bible says, after they prayed and prayed and shouted in the afternoon time, Elijah kept mocking. He kept mocking them. It's like he put his hands in his pocket and began to mock them. He said, you people should shout more. Maybe your God is sleeping and needed to be awake. Somebody should just wake him up. Or maybe your God is traveling. Or maybe your God is journeying. Or your God is doing business uh, transaction. Shout more. The Bible says they began, they lifted up their voice and began to shout using knives to cut themselves. Blood were gushing out of their body, yet there was no response. At the time of evening sacrifice, Elijah came and rebuilt the broken altar and put a sacrifice on the altar. And he called on the God that answers by fire, who is also the God of judgment. And the Bible says the fire fell. Now look at before the fire fell. After he put the sacrificial uh, uh, animal, the animal on the altar, he told them to put water on the altar. Put water on the sacrifice. They poured water. He didn't tell them to pour fuel or kerosene. He said, put water. They poured water. He said, pour water again. They pour water. Pour it again. They pour. Pour it again. The water soaked the altar, soaked the sacrifice, and the water rushed down. When he cried on God, fire fell and devoured the sacrifice, devoured the altar and licked the water. It's like the fire developed tongue and licked the water. And all the prophets of Baal began to shout, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Very wrong English. <laughs> the Lord, he is you know, people who don't go to church, they don't know how to say praise the Lord. You say praise the God. Have you ever heard them before? Praise the God. That's what the prophets of Baal were doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said, let none of them escape. Slaughter them. Tonight, I slaughter all your prophets of Baal. Tonight, I slaughter them in the name of Jesus. Listen, we have the capacity to bring judgment on them. Elisha brought judgment on the 42 children. There is a capacity to be judgmental. Are you ready to be judgmental? Are you ready to be judgmental? Are you ready to be judgmental? In 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 9 to 15, we saw when the king called his men, he sent them somewhere to go and consult with the God of Ekron. And on the way they met Elijah. He said, is it because there is no God in Israel that the king sent you to go and consult with the God of Ekron? He said, go and tell him and the child will not survive, he will die. And they came back. Why did you come back? He said, we met a man. How does it look like? They described prophet Elijah. He said, alright, come. My men. Fifty men with the captain. Go and arrest him, dead or alive. Bring his head here. Dead or alive. And the fifty soldiers with the captain went and met Elijah. He was just sitting, he was sitting up on a tree. They said, thou man of God, you insulted the king. And the king sent us to bring you. Come down now. And Elijah looked at them and said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and roast you and your 50. The Bible says, Fire descended from heaven, killed the captain, and roasted the 50. 51 men dead. The man waited, nobody came. He sent another man again, 50 soldiers, and the captain. He said, Go and bring Elijah, dead or alive. And they came. They met him on the street, sitting down. That man was a fool. You came and saw 50 dead soldiers with the captain. You would have run back. He looked at him. He said, Thou man of God, 
You insulted the king. And the king said, we should bring you. Come down. And Elijah looked at them and said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you. The Bible said fire came down, killed the captain, and killed the remaining 50 men. And he sent another 50 soldiers with the captain. When that one came, he looked at them. 50 soldiers with the captain, another 50 soldiers with the captain. He went on his knee. He said, man of God, please, let my life be precious to you and the life of these soldiers. Please. You know, I'm not supposed to come here, but I'm under instruction. I'm under, you know, my master. That's why I came. There's no way I would disobey him. I'm not supposed to come. Please preserve my life and the life of these soldiers. The king said we should call you. Please, sir. You are, you are under invitation. We are not here to arrest you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, follow him. Hallelujah. Tonight, I bring judgments to anyone that has been afflicting you. In the name of Jesus. I bring judgmental fire to all your adversaries in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare judgments to all my enemies. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare judgments against all my enemies in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is the burial of your enemies. Say in the name of Jesus. Anyone resisting me I bring the judgment of God. Elijah brought judgment to 100 soldiers and two captains. He had that capacity. And brought mercy to 50 soldiers and the captain that was humble. You can bring judgment and you can bring mercy. Hallelujah. Are you ready to release fire tonight? Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, every wicked man every wicked woman every witch every wizard ancestral powers that are resisting me I bring the judgment of God I release fire I release fire I release fire before we pray what are the triggers for deep intimacy with God we we'll summarize here what are the triggers for deep intimacy with God? What are the triggers for deep intimacy with God? Number one, passion for God. If you want to trigger God in action in your life, you need to be passionate with Him. Passion is what brings you into intimacy. Passion for God. You need to be passionate for God. You need to be passionate about the things of God. Your passion is what drives you to God. Your passion is what makes you to pursue God. Elijah was always passionate before God. That was why he was always standing. 1 Kings 17.1 He was always passionate about God. It was his passion for God that made him not to like what was happening in Israel. So your passion for God draws you close to God. Are you understanding me? Number two, trigger for deep intimacy with God is be moved by what moves God. When you are moved by what moves God, you come close to Him. First Kings 16, 30 to 34. Elijah was moved. When he saw the apostasy in Israel, he was moved. He saw it the way God was seeing it. He saw it the way God was seeing it. You cannot be intimate with God and not be moved by what is moving him. Anything that moves God will move you also. Church, are you understanding what I'm saying? Number three, trigger is live righteously before God. Live righteously. First Kings 17, 1 to 2. Prophet Elijah was a righteous prophet. Live righteously before God. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is good, what is perfect, uh, what is acceptable, and the perfect will of God. We must live righteously. We must stay away from sin. People of intimacy don't live in sin. We must not compromise our stand for any reason. Not for money. Not for any lady or any man. Not for sugar daddies and sugar mommies. We must stand righteously before God. He said, before whom I stand. Righteousness gives you boldness in the presence of God. Are you ready to be righteous tonight? Number four, trigger for deep intimacy with God is spend time with God in the place of prayers and worship. Spend time with God in the place of prayers and worship. Don't pass a day without spending at least one hour. Don't pass a day without praying two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. As a businessman, organize your prayer schedule. In 24 hours, learn how to cough out at least one hour or two hours or three hours and pray. First Kings 17, 1 to 2. 1 Kings 18, 41 to 46. We saw Elijah praying when God told him that rain was about to fall. He went on Mount Carmel and knelt down and put his head in between his knee and began to pray, began to kabash. He began to move the hand that moves the world. He began to cause evaporation to take place so that there will be renation. And he sent his servants to go and check whether there was a cloud. And Elijah went and saw there was no cloud. He came back and said nothing. He prayed again. He said go and check. He went and checked nothing. He prayed again. He said go and check. The Bible said he prayed until on the seventh time he saw a hand in the cloud that looks like a man's hand. <laughs> that one is another message for another day. And rain began to fall. You must learn how to spend time with God to pray and worship Him. Psalms 22 verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. God inhabits our praise. Hmm. Amen. There's a song I sent today in the choir WhatsApp group. I don't know that the choir people saw that song. It was something that was flowing in the spirit. And I had to go look for the song. And we will do it one of these days also. Hallelujah. I was singing in the spirit and my wife screamed in the kitchen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We must maintain intimacy with him. Spend time and pray. Spend time and worship. Ah, you understand what I'm saying? Finally, number five. Okay, you can write these scriptures because of those that are writing. Write these scriptures. First Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Luke 18 verse 1 He spake a parable to them to this end That men ought always to pray And not to faint The church is fainting The church is fainting How could somebody sleep from 8 or from 9 You sleep till 6 in the morning Something is wrong Somebody is, somebody is sick Maybe that person is beaten by Mosquito Amen That's why he's sleeping Hallelujah. Or says a fly. We must pray. Number five. Spend time with his word and deploy it when necessary. Spend time with his word. Spend time with his word and deploy the word when necessary. Elijah so much spent time with the word until his word aligned with the word of God. That was why he said, before God whom I stand, there shall be no rain. By the space of three years and six months, no rain or dew. According to my word, invariably, my word is aligned with the word of God. So if I say, 
It's like God is saying. Anything I say, it's like I'm releasing the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. We must spend time with the word of God. When you spend time with the word of God, your words will align with the word of God. And anything you say carries power. Where the word of the king is, there is power. When you release the word, power flows. I pray for somebody. In this month of deep intimacy with God, I usher you to another realm. Amen. I usher you to another realm. Amen. I usher you to another realm. In the precious name of Jesus. Shall we stand up? Makasha. Libra Katabakasha.
to pursue you with the whole of my heart. In Jesus' precious name. Let me pray. I pray for you. I declare you saved. I declare you born again. I declare you washed in the blood of Jesus. Be accepted in the beloved. In Jesus' precious name. As your hands are stretched, I pray for you. May the passion, may the hunger and the thirst for God come on you tonight. In the name of Jesus. I pray that anywhere your prayer life is dead, your fasting life is dead, your worship life, your study is dead, may it come alive in the name of Jesus. Now is the time that those that worship God will worship Him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks us to worship Him. Into your closets and be alone with God. The way Jacob was. In Jesus' precious name. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our offerings to God. Our tithes, our offerings to God. Lift them up, lift them up. Lift them up as we pray. Father, I declare the blessing of God over every 